two of these skirts on. <laughs> I've got a skirt and a top down here. I've got this on. No, I'm not this fat, just so you know. <laughs> Welcome to Simply Simmons. I'm Deandra Simmons, and I'm here with Jania. Is that right? Jania's right. Jania's right. Ah, that's right. Okay, well, we're going to call her Z now. Well, and today we are doing Simply Simmons Super Bowl edition because Jania happens to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. And I'm so glad that she graced my presence. And no, I'm not going to dance. Don't worry. <laughs> but I do have enough padding to be a football player today because I've got my apron, my, okay, this is my husband's. He's worn it one time. Sorry. Sorry, Dad. It is your number. Um, and then Jania convinced me to wear this, which is two layers. So no, I'm not pregnant, people. Okay. I'm just pat it up in case we get in a, you this know, is so cute. what is that that show, the food war, the, <laughs> the food wars, in case we get in a war, I'm ready to go, you know, just so you know. Okay, so today I'm going to do yes. a savory because I am, yes. as you know, not the best sweet cook in the world. I can do it, but um, I'm going to leave that to you because apparently you're really, really good. Yeah, I do love to bake, so I'll be making the sweets. And we have some great stories for you. So let's just talk about what we're going to do today. The first is going to do the savory dish, which is my dish. It's called Playoff Poo Poo's. We're not calling it Philadelphia Eagle Poo Poo's, sorry, or Patriot <laughs> Poo Poo's. It's Playoff Poo Poo's. And then what are you going to be doing? Savory. I'm going to be making the Super Bowl truffles and then the field flutes. And that's going to be a mousse dessert. Now, um, you are from Ukraine. I am. So I want to talk a little bit about that while I'm doing my prep for my Perfect. dish. Let's do and it. And you can tell me your story because I know a little bit about you, but not enough. And I'm sure that um, everyone that watches the show is going to be so fascinated because you have an incredible heartfelt story that you're going to share you. today with us. Thanks. So, OK, so let's get started um, to make our playoff poo-poos. What we're going to need is we're gonna have a cup and a half of cheddar cheese. I just use medium cheddar cheese. It's not my coffee. We're not putting coffee in there, sorry. Here, let me get rid of that. <laughs> I need a little kick every now and then. We are going to have some, a cup of chopped black olives. Now, um, Brianna, of course, went to the store, as she always does, and thought this was chopped black olives instead of sliced, but we'll take care of that, right? We're using a half a cup of green onions. We're using a half a cup of mayonnaise, a teaspoon, it says a teaspoon or less. I love curry, so a teaspoon of curry powder. We're gonna use a dash of salt, you know, to your liking, and then English muffins that I've already pre-sliced. So this recipe was I believe it's my grandmother or great-great-grandmother. I mean, it's literally typed out on a typewriter. What you're gonna need also is a pan, just like this. We put some Reynolds wrap on top, so because it's gonna spill over its cheese. Um, let me, you know what I don't have? Brianna, I don't have a bowl to mix everything together. Come in. <laughs> Thank you, Brianna. We can't just do this with our hands. You know? <laughs> we gotta put it together. So tell me, what I think is really interesting about you, well, there are many things, but you actually are Dallas Cowboys cheerleader that's from the Ukraine. Correct. So oh, you yeah. told me you were five when you came here? No, uh, we moved here in 2005. Oh, 2005. Okay. Yes. And how old were you? Um, I think I was 12 and a half. Did you speak English? I did not speak English. Uh, when we moved here. You sound great now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you <a> quick learner. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when we moved here, there wasn't really anyone else that I could speak Russian with except for my mom and my sister. So my only option was really to learn English to. So when you went into school, the, when you went to school, what happened? Because if you didn't speak English, how did right. you acclimate to everything? So I went to ESL, and that is a class for foreign mm -hmm. students. English is a second language. And I spent all my days there learning the language. And then once my teacher, uh, Miss Stevens, who I, I really love, she was incredible, um, felt like I knew English well enough, she would send me to regular classes. So I was able to interact with Americans and pick up English even faster that way. Was it hard to like read the books though? I mean, I wouldn't think the math would be as hard, but I think the reading comprehension and the, yes. the test. Did, now, did you have the test back then that they have now where they have to take those tests every year to pass through? And Yes, I did. So I can um, barely make that on my own as a <laughs> person that's born and raised here and does speak English. So, oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, it was really difficult. I actually have a vivid memory of coming into class the very first time and Miss Stevens handing me a book and telling me something, and I think she was saying something along the lines of, here's the book that we're gonna be following, like, we're gonna be learning English off of here, just read it if you can. And I <laughs> had no clue what she was saying to me, and I remember I got teary-eyed, and just got really emotional because I really felt 
lost, lost and yeah. out of place. And my mom, she did take English lessons before we moved here, so she spoke English. Um, but now, did the kids? I'm gonna put this in here now. So I'm gonna add the the chopped black olives, people. <laughs> Did the kids make fun of you? Were they nice to you? And this was in Texas, right? This was in Texas. And the majority of kids were from the South, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, from um, They probably never heard Russian before. <laughs> I was the only Russian speaking foreign student. Oh, wow. So uh, they were able to talk between themselves, but it was difficult for me to um, communicate with the kids because I couldn't really speak to them unless I knew English. Mm -hmm. So English was the common language that we, we used to communicate and it really encouraged Was it hard to me. make friends? It was because you, you know, at ESL you were sitting with the same group, group, of, group of kids every day, all day, mm -hmm. and if you can't speak to them because they don't speak English um, or Russian, mm -hmm. it really felt a bit isolating. But once you start getting out there and you learn a language and you're in classes with everybody else, it really felt more cohesive. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands and then come back and add the curry powder and the salt, and I'll taste it. This smells really good. You me hungry. Now, you know, the curry, like I said, is kind of up to you. I love curry. Our family eats a lot of curry. So I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, full teaspoon. Where's my teaspoons here? Of curry powder in here, and then I'll taste it. There you go. And you can just kind of use any kind of curry powder. Color. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more because it's stuck on there. Okay, go ahead and mix that, and then I'm gonna take a dash of salt, and if you don't know what a dash is, basically pinch between your fingers and go like that. But remember, cheddar cheese has a lot of salt in it, so you're not gonna to wanna to add a bunch more salt to this dish. So when did you start dancing? Because obviously to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, you have to can dance like regular dance, but not like all this, you know, that stuff, whatever, that's what I call it. <laughs> Oh, I love so. it. I love it. Uh, my mom put me in rhythmic gymnastics and she was actually my coach all the way up until we moved here. So I've been... And what is rhythmic gym? Or gymnastics? gymnastics. It's the yeah. gymnastics at the Olympics with the ribbons. What? <laughs> and the balls uh, and the hoops and the clubs. Okay, wait. Have what? You... <laughs> rhythmic gymnastics? No idea. Yeah, it's a very, really popular sport over overseas. Not so much here, but it's a very intensive sport. We don't do like flips uh, and tumbling. It's more of an aesthetic gymnastics, but you have to be extremely flexible and very, very strong and coordinated because you're balancing, you're, you're essentially performing while um, throwing the element okay. up in the air. No way I would ever be able body, to do this. So. I mean, I tried to juggle at Williams Sonoma the other day. It did not go so well. So <laughs> if I can't even do that, like not even this, then mm-mm. Okay, we've taken these out of the oven, so I'm gonna turn these little babies over. And like I said, you don't have to do that, but that's just my preference. I like these little crispy. Yeah, so let me let them sit just for a minute and uh, cool down so the cheese doesn't melt immediately. Um, so after you were taking this rhythmic dancing or rhythmic gymnastics yes. or whatever, so then you came to the United States, mm -hmm. your mom got married, I think you told me, yes. and then you just continued with the dance program and school. Yeah, so I found the drill team at my high school and... Um, Bad subject for me, but yes, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I fell in love with dance and that's when I first started really dancing because rhythmic gymnastics is so different from dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that I danced in college um, and I when I moved after college, I moved to Dallas, and I danced at a company here with Bree, actually. You have a job, too, in addition to I the do. Dallas Cowboys. Yes. And you're married. I am. And you bake, which I is do. what you're going to do today. So tell yes. us how all of this fits into your life, and where'd you go to school to college? Yeah, I went to Texas a and I'm an Aggie. Did you, did you? My dad was an Aggie, too. Oh, really? <laughs> did you dance there? I did dance at Texas a and There's an organization that I joined called Dance Arts Society, mm -hmm. and I've danced there my entire time um, at Texas a and I was um, an officer for a while and a president my last year in college. And uh, yeah, it really helped me broaden my um, technique and dance. So then you graduated with a degree in what? Communications or something? Or? Uh, my degree is in visualization, so, and then I got a master's of science. And no, I, You're really stupid, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I moved You didn't have here. to take Russian because you already knew that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in fun fact, I did take Russian. Oh my lord. Because um, that was elective. an easy A, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to. It was that uh, my sister and I crossed in college for one semester, and she needed a foreign language credit or something was foreign um, for her degree because she wanted to do um, international business. Mm -hmm. And 
I, she took Russian and I said, I'll just take it with you. So we just, we ended up taking the Russian language together. And did you make an A? We both made okay. an A. <laughs> Thank God, if you didn't, I'd be concerned. <laughs> but that was really fun. That was actually one of my fondest memories uh, from college, just taking those classes with her. So then when you uh, graduated and you came here, you and I have something else in common, I just found out, that you, I don't know if you currently work in animation or you did before yes. um, in production. Yes, so my visualization degree is in game design, graphic design, and animation. And we learn how everything works and also learn how to create it. And then my master's degree focused on the production side of it and uh, managing projects in the creative digital field. So when I moved here to Dallas, I got a job with a mobile gaming studio and then I worked for Don't an animation studio. Don't tell my studio. kids that. Oh my god, they're going to die. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and then I worked for an animation studio and now I'm working for a consulting company um, helping with uh, game production. So I was in animation. I worked for a company called Matinee Entertainment. Nice. And we worked on a show called Kampung Boy, which was in Malaysia. And it was like the most popular show in Malaysia. And wow. In Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> and my, the guy that was my producer, the one I worked for, um, he created a show called Ren and Stimpy. Yes, that's how old I am. Frank Saperstein, by the way. And he won, I believe it was like a Emmy or, so or something. He won a big award for that. A lot of different people in this field. I mean, you meet anyone from creative to really um, like computer technical people, like programmers, and then you meet designers, people that come up with game design, UI, UX design, and also like writers because they have to be the creative drive behind the project. And yeah, and then producers, people that just make the project go. So I put the, the cheese mix on top of the English muffins and I'm going to put these in for, I don't know, until I'm going to put them on broil. So basically you really have to watch it. You can't just walk away and set five minute timer. You really need to watch it because you don't want anything to burn. Right. But, um, and then we have this much left, so we can put them on more, we can put more English muffins together and more little poo-poos together, but very simple and trust me, it's delicious. Like that. Now it's time to plate our poo-poos. <laughs> get the platter. <laughs> Let's have a platter and then I have a question for you because I have a bee. Yes. And I love bees. My mother has called me Queen Bee my whole life, pretty much, or Princess P or something like that. Like, she always called me Princess, Queen Bee. I'm an only child, so, you know, <laughs> I'm very well loved. <laughs> but you were telling a story before yes. about the ladybug, which is my other favorite thing, is this good yeah. luck. Yeah. yeah, my ladybug, uh, my grandma has been crocheting ladybugs uh, for on our pillowcases since I was a kid, and I think she was doing that before that. And it's for good luck and just her little memory of her that we can keep with us for forever. And then when she was here at this December, uh, she crocheted one on my apron. I love it. I always try to wear a bee when I cook. I love it. It reminds me of my grandmother and my mother who inspired me to cook. And so here, basically, actually it's easier to cut them on here, but you just cut them in fourths or halves, whatever you like. It doesn't have to be that fancy. We can also garnish if we want to with something in the middle, but um, this is how you do it. It's very, very simple and I mean, people, trust me, they'll look at them, they'll not know what it is because it looks like it may have sausage or something, but... The olives, yeah. Yeah. If it's, if you are um, a vegetarian like Brie, you can eat this. Martha Stewart, I'm not, but maybe one day I can go to the Martha, school, Martha Stewart School of uh, Crafting, whatever it's called. So we finished our first dish, uh, the Simply Simmons Super Bowl edition. Yes. And this is our playoff poo-poo, so just take a little napkin here with a queen bee. Yes, Don't have any ladybug you. napkins, okay. sorry. <laughs> and you can try it. I'm excited, I'm so hungry. Mm. Oh my God, it brings me back to childhood. My mother's 1970s cocktail parties with caviar pie <laughs> and this and all those other good things that she used to make. I love the olives in this. Mm. Okay, we'll be, we'll be back. I gotta finish this tray first. Okay, and we are finished with our savory part yes, of the Super Bowl uh, goodies that we're making. And now we're onto the sweet part. And she's much sweeter than me, so you be <laughs> glad that she's making this. I tell you, before we get started, I'll tell you the next story. Okay. So was it last week or week before? Okay, after the, the Cowboys lost, and then they had yes. the playoff, playoff thing last week, I think it was, or whatever. Um, so I went with my husband to somebody's house, and we were sitting there. I wasn't paying attention. I think the Eagles were playing, and who knows? I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, who's playing? Is this the Cowboys? 
He's like, God bless. Thank God you're you're pretty. <laughs> I'm definitely not sports smart. <laughs> so anyway, that's my cowboy story. I thought they were still in the playoffs. I didn't know they were out already. <laughs> that was a sad day when they lost. Ah, oh, man. It would have been amazing to go to the Super Bowl, but they did so great this season. I mean, we're really proud of them, so. Yes. We're gonna be making two desserts today, and both of them are pretty simple, and I thought about making desserts that are not in the oven because, you know, prepping for a Super Bowl party, the oven's always busy. Yeah. People are cooking things, so these are gonna be pretty simple uh, with very few ingredients and no oven required. And notice our color theme. We're, st yes. we're still staying with the Dallas Cowboys, we even are. though we're not in. We're hoping for next year. Yes. We're prepping for next year. <laughs> you know, um, hope springs eternal in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> we have to be hopeful here. A little coffee with my Real Housewives, also cowboy color cup. Yes, it is. And to start off, there are 18 Oreos in here, and we're going to put them in the food processor. And we're going to have the recipe down below, too, in case you're wondering, in case you don't remember this. So, and um, oh, okay. yeah, you're good. And this recipe makes about. Let me put them in here for you. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, about 16 truffles. So if you want to make more than that, just double the recipe exactly. And if uh, 16 is good enough, then you're good to go. Probably eat all those before you're done. So you're gonna close that up. We're gonna close this. And then you're just gonna put it on high, and we're going to let them do their thing. required for this one. <laughs> so the next thing um, your head. <laughs> this is one pack and I'm going to use half of this for the 18 Oreos. Okay. Why just half? Because <laughs> if you put too much it's going to be too sticky and then the balls won't hold their shape. <laughs> we definitely want the balls to hold their shape. That would be really a tragedy. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. I'll be quiet. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little alive. irreverent. You don't get to be a housewife by being prim and proper, you know? Oh! <laughs> As I said... Can we do that? Let's do that part. Okay. You know what? I'll just eat some of it. I like cream cheese. I do too. I love cream cheese. Well, one thing I forgot to mention, make sure that cream cheese is at room temperature. So this one's been sitting out for a little bit, and it's soft, so it can't, it can't be cold. Um, pretty mushy, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna actually take it off so, so you guys can see. Right here, it's pretty mushy, but it's still holding its shape, so that's that's the right consistency. That's why only a half a blog, or half a blog, or whatever it's called, half a block, <laughs> half a block. <laughs> cream cheese. Cream cheese. Block. The part where we take off our rings. But you don't leave them anywhere. Yeah, don't leave them anywhere. <laughs> okay, you can help me make these. So oh, okay. I use a what? tablespoon, just to kind of grab the same, amount of um, Oreos the same, uh, every time. So it looks about that much. And then take it off the spoon. Okay. And then you're just gonna roll it. Right? Yes, that's okay. perfect. Oh, it comes right off. That's perfect. Yeah. So it looks like this. And it's okay if it's not perfect. And we're just gonna set it down and move on to the next. Okay, how did you get into baking? Because, I mean, <laughs> or do you actually cook at home too? Like I do that? cook, yes. Okay. I do love to cook uh, baking. I just feel like you can get more artistic in the decorating mm -hmm. uh, than cooking for me personally. And I got into baking one summer in college. I was um, going to school in the summer and was watching the show called American Bake Off Amazing or Wedding Cakes Wait, amazing. Okay. or something like that. Um, and I was just fascinated with what people could make out of cake. I couldn't believe that it was food and they were creating literally work of art. Um, and so I signed up for a cake decorating course at Michael's and took all four courses, got certified as a cake decorator and got my first cake decorating job in a bakery in College Station. A job uh, part-time at a bakery in Arlington and it's called Cakeaholics. And if you haven't been, mm. you have to check it out. Matt owns it and he's incredible. He's kind of my mentor. He really taught me all the most amazing cake decorating techniques and we are still friends till this day and he, he's just really incredible. Now, have you ever tried to um, audition for any of the 
the baking shows or anything like that? Yeah, so fun fact, actually, when I worked for him, I um, almost got the chance to go, but I got a job and, and weren't able to, to attend. But he goes all the time, and I would love to do that one day. That would be really fun. And now on your Instagram, mm -hmm. which we'll put up for you because it's a long name, um, you sell different items like your truffles and things like that, correct? Yes, yeah, so um, I you do make get, on the weekends? Yeah, I do get orders from friends and family and then friends of friends when they come to parties and they um, have my cakes or my desserts. And yeah, it's just really a hobby and I really love doing it. And it really gives me a chance to express myself creatively. There's Eve, um, somehow I got tasked with a dessert. No idea how this happened because I'm not a dessert maker. So I decided to make this it was like a pie, but it was like a moon pie pie. Okay. So everything was all good in the world because the, the crust was, I think what it is, a graham cracker crust. And then nice. you put a marshmallow layer and then it was chocolate. And then where I got a little hung up was the topping. So the topping was a French meringue, which is very yes. stiff and sticky. It's not like a typical meringue that you make for like a pie here yeah. in the United States. I threw it in the trash. I threw the, the meringue in the trash. The pie was really good. So then I just went with the whip, whipped cream. Called my mother crying, because of course I tried it three or four times. I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> I'm never going to be on the Great British Baking Show. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that show. I love that guy. Um, uh, what is his Paul name? Paul Hollywood. Hollywood. Oh my god. Now, like, that cannot be his real last name. I mean, seriously. It like, could be. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's it's a good last name. Though. Savory cooking, it's more subjective, but you cannot in desserts go, okay, well, I think I'm gonna put a cup of flour and maybe instead of three quarters, you have to do ex exact, exact, exact. That's the issue for me because I'm not an exact, exact person. So now these are gonna go in the freezer. We wanna make sure that these are really hard um, for us to dip them into hot chocolate, melt the chocolate. We don't want them to melt. So these are going in the freezer. Okay, perfect. We'll be right back. Good luck finding some space. <laughs> While our Super Bowl truffles are in the freezer, we're gonna get started now on the yes. field flutes. Yes. Right? Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, first thing is going to be chopping some fruit. Mm -hmm. So this dessert is going to be layered with fruit and chocolate mousse. So I've got some strawberries in here, blueberries and raspberries, and you can use whatever fruit of choice. Or if you want to do not fruit, you could do like pretzels and caramel. So it's really up to you. So I'll let you um, chop. I'm horrible at chopping. That's what I'm going to culinary school. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've great. been in knife skills class, but I think I'm a lost cause. <laughs> And uh, while she's doing that, I'm gonna start on the ganache. So we're gonna make very simple ganache. I got some heavy whipping cream right here and some chopped chocolate. Um, I kind of eyeball when I bake. <laughs> Versus using actual Wait, hold on. I know. Okay, I know. wait, where, uh, back up, what? You eyeball when you bake? I do. Um, I usually look at things that their textures and consistencies, and I also uh, taste tests to make sure that they're not too sweet. I like my desserts pretty bitter. I'm not a huge sweet tooth. Um, I'm actually savory as well. This is dark chocolate. Okay. Um, you can get this in the baking section. This is the Giardelli uh, for specifically for baking. And then I'm just gonna pour some heavy cream over it. And this it looks about right until it comes up to the top. And I'm gonna put it in the microwave. I'm gonna watch it, so I'm gonna do 30 seconds until it starts to boil. And then I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna stir. I've got my little knife right here to stir. So you're getting a healthy dessert because you're getting a lot of antioxidants. So raspberries are full of ellagic acid, which is a cancer-fighting property. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, and of course blueberries, we all know, great antioxidants as well. So, you know, and dark chocolate. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And there's not a lot of sugar in this, so I barely add any powdered sugar because, I, like I mentioned, I like the more bitter, um, rich chocolate and not when it's really sweet. So the sweetness we're going to be getting from that chocolate in uh, the ganache, and then we're going to add a little bit of powdered sugar to the whipping cream when we start whipping. Perfect. So now I'm going to start stirring, but it will eventually combine. Just got to be... What kind of savory dishes do you make at home with for you and your husband? It's a great question. What do you like to cook? Um, my mom says this when we call her cooking this, whatever is in the fridge. So she opens the fridge and then she just makes whatever is there. But mm -hmm. it always ends up being these like amazing dishes. And I feel like my cooking style comes from that because I watched her do that over the years. So I open the fridge and I see, okay, what can I make out of the ingredients that I have? I don't always follow recipes. Kind of um, 
kind of go with my gut and and make whatever I can. But I do love making Ukrainian food. That's so what I was gonna ask you. It. What are some of the Ukrainian dishes that I might not know or that you love or that you grew up as a child eating? Yes, so one of my favorite things, funnily enough, is buckwheat. If you haven't heard of it, it's a grain. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like you cook it like rice in a pot with water. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Buckwheat with butter, man, I can eat that every day for the rest of my mm. life. Okay, so the ganache is really well mixed now. You can see it's really liquid, but it's very shiny. So it's good, that part is good to go. And then strawberries we can put in here. Okay. And then I'm gonna really quickly just give these raspberries a little, a little chop. Do you eat a lot of beets in Ukraine <laughs> like they do in Russia? Yes, um, my mom loves beets. My husband loves beets. I didn't like them growing up, but now I'm, I'm good with them. They're also healthy for you, so. You know, if you had a hard night of drinking, have some <laughs> beet juice in the morning or just eat a bunch of beets, you'll feel better. There are a lot of things it's a that, great hangover cure. that I didn't like as a kid that I do now like olives. I used to not like olives as a kid. Mm -hmm. I love olives now. We've been on this kick with olives from H-E-B that come with stuffed feta. Oh my gosh, oh, they're yeah. incredible. Um, I love anything pickled. So we do a lot of pickled vegetables in Ukraine because not everything is seasonal. Like you can get a lot of the things here, like fruit in the winter. You would not be able to do that in Ukraine. And we pickle a lot of our uh, food so that you can eat it over winter. But yeah, pickled tomatoes, pickled obviously like cucumbers and uh, pickled mushrooms, carrots, it's so good. I like pickles. They're also very healthy for you as well yes. because it, it gives you the probiotics for your gut. Okay, so the next step is going to be mixing the heavy whipping cream. And for this, make sure that your bowl is cold mm -hmm. before you start. And like I said, I eyeball, but you know, here we go. <laughs> we're going to make this work. Um, do you have a cup measure? Mm -hmm. chance? I sure do. We're gonna start with one cup of heavy whipping cream. And then I'm gonna do one and a half, one and a half. How many hours a night during the season are you, are you, you're going Monday through Friday or what? Yes, uh, if, if there's a game coming up, we do Monday through Friday and we are practicing from seven until whatever hour, um, usually like 10, um, until we get the dances all in good shape. And it's it's a lot of cardio. So honestly, a lot of the girls, like we don't necessarily watch what we eat. We still have to make sure we're nourishing our body. And they have a nutritionist that works with us too, just to make sure that we're consuming the right foods and carbs and protein. And um, yeah, just to fuel our body. Otherwise we won't be able to do what we're doing. It sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> So, what about, are the dances hard? Who does the choreography? Uh, a lot of dances that we do have been passed down through the generations of the teams in DCC. So um, I don't necessarily know who choreographed them, but sometimes they bring in guest choreographers and those are really fun because you get to meet them and uh, learn their mm -hmm. their um, their choreography. Something that I was just really in awe of um, is the community that comes with DCC. and. We had a, an alumni halftime where we got to meet all of the DCCs throughout the years mm. and there were some women from the original teams that kickstarted oh, wow. DCC and I got, I got emotional meeting oh, them yeah. and watching them dance. It was honestly my favorite practice. It was just the amount of women there that had to go through something to make sure that you know you can have this and be on this team mm. was just really incredible and very inspiring. And, that, yeah, that was that's that's something about D DCC. I don't think people really realize it's not just about dancing. It's not just about making this team. It's really an incredible organization of women throughout history. I mean, the, I do, but the uh, director of DCC and then the so Dallas the, Cowboy cheerleaders, which she's talking about. She keeps saying DCC, not Dallas, Sorry. Co not Dallas Country yes. Club, mother. <laughs> We're not talking about that. <laughs> Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Um, yeah, Kelly is the director of Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, and Judy is the head choreographer of Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, and they are incredible. I mean, they've been in part of this organization and leading this organization for a long time now. They're there with us every day practicing. I mean, the amount of time they sacrifice for this team and their life and the work they put in, I mean, you can you can really feel their heart and soul in, in this team. So, got our heavy whipping cream to good consistency, so it's kind of getting thick. It's not as runny anymore. And I'm gonna take the cocoa powder. How much do you need? Do you need a measuring spoon? I have a sifter, so we're gonna sift this in. Um, 
Let's see, I'm just gonna grab this teaspoon. <laughs> this is baking with Jaina. Make sure you, make sure you watch because <laughs> <laughs> our measurements may be off a little bit. Okay, so I'm doing two, two big teaspoons. Okay. Let's do three because I really want that rich chocolate and we'll taste this um, later and just to make sure that um, it's rich enough. I'm gonna sift that in here. I'm gonna do the same thing like teaspoon with a big hump on it. Okay, but how many? One, two, let's start with three. Okay. So while I'm doing this, um, you almost didn't get to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. That was close, close call. And um, that story is fascinating and you look amazing by the way. Thank I you. I didn't have any idea that you went through the severity that you did go through. So I'd love for you to share with people your um, inspiring story because it's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, and when I, um, in May, the audition started on May 2nd and- That was 2022? 2022, mm -hmm. yes, and last year. And um, May 13th, um, I found out that I made it through the first round of cuts and I was moving on to the next round of DC auditions and I was celebrating my sister's graduation with my family in College Station. Honestly, the way we describe it is like a freak accident. I've never seen anything like this, but this ball of fire out of the fire pit just came out of the fire pit and flew at me and landed on, on my, my body. And um, I started burning and it burnt my face, my neck, my hands, my legs. Um, and then my fiance and my mom, they, started taking off their clothes and started putting out the fire around my face first because you know the hair just everything catches on fire mm -hmm. so quickly and um yeah it was honestly just a, a horrible horrible moment and i got rushed to the er people asked me what it felt like and there's no better way to describe it other than you feel your skin peeling off of your body and while that is happening you are baking in an oven and you just can't get it off you that that was the that's the feeling um that i think was the scariest is that i couldn't breathe because the fire was kind of cutting off the oxygen but then the feeling of just being burnt alive like being baked um alive it was it was pretty horrifying so but got to the er and i got um rushed to Parkland Hospital from College Station and you had to drive four hours with no pain medication or anything right they gave me something but oh um, the College Station ER they did the best they could um, but they were not specialists when it comes to burns so they uh, made a great decision of just rushing me to Parkland burn unit which was incredible um, the staff there the nurses there were just why didn't like, they fly you um, I don't I don't know. Honestly, I was kind of in and out <laughs> um, at the ER, so I, I, I wasn't really aware. But um, yeah, I got to Parkland and they took a look at me and they checked me into the burn unit for a week and I was there recovering and they, yeah, they, all this is thanks to them, so. Well, you look amazing and her story's incredible. The whole accident. How did you, so how did you go back after being in a hospital for a week to go to tryouts? My husband, he, that same night, he contacted everyone that I had a contact with on DCC and they were so incredible. They helped me out and um, said, yeah, you know, we're, we really want her to be okay, so we'll hold that second audition. And it's not, not that I got to miss something, but they would have to see it later. Um, but. They were with me every step of the way, my family, my friends. I mean, I owe, honestly, to everyone, I, I could not have done this by myself. It, it took a village. Mm. Um, I mean, even Brie helped me before finals. I'm very happy that you're okay. Thank you. It's me too. Testimony. <laughs> okay, so what are we doing next? Yes, so we're gonna start mixing this. We put powdered sugar and cocoa powder in this, and I'm gonna put a little bit, I'm just gonna start with half of the ganache. It's a little bit bitter, it has a little bit of sweetness, and then the fruit will also add to that sweetness. So this is ready yeah, to go. Yeah, it's not too sweet, which I love. Yeah. And we can move this cutting out of the way and we'll start assembling our mousse. 
that it's gonna be on top. It's like a field. <clears throat> oh, field. I love it. Okay. <laughs> we'll make we'll make one and I'll. Oh my god, that's scary. That's Wait, you got that? that has to do with piping, right? Last time I did this, it did not work out so well. <laughs> You're gonna do I was great. Wearing it from here. You're gonna to do head. great. I'll help you put it in the bag. So my trick for the bag is I roll it over. And then I put my hand in that little folded section. Yeah, I'll fold it over for uh, actually more, like a cup. Okay, cool. And then you're gonna grab the bag around with your hand. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then uh, you're gonna take the spatula and you're just gonna kind of brush it against your finger into the into the bag, like this. Hmm. Okay, you want to give it a go? Yeah, okay. Well, against this side? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. How much more? Just keep going. All right. So I'm going to kind of shake that down into the bag and we're going to push the move. Just kind of had an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. And then I take this like this, mm -hmm. and I twist it a few times towards me, so it's nice and tight. And then I'm just gonna cut a hole here. I'm like terrified. I'm gonna... and hole right there. <laughs> okay. Yep. I'm gonna hold it up, and I like to hold it between my fingers. So it's tighter. Are you lefty or righty? Right. Alrighty. Okay. So we're gonna start assembling. So we got our fruit, our mousse. We're all ready to go. Okay. So you're gonna put your take it into your glass and just squeeze. Mine is pooping. Oh my lord! Really? This is not going. You got it. That's perfect. Okay. That's good. Okay. And then we're gonna do our first layer of fruit. So grab whatever you want. I'm gonna do raspberries because they're my favorite. This looks so much better than mine. <laughs> mine looks like somebody took a dump in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Get it's like my layer. dog got into it. <laughs> good layer of fruit. That's perfect. Okay. And then after you got that, you're gonna have to pipe back. again. Perfect. And then I'm gonna push more fruit in. So I'm gonna go with strawberries this time. Mm -hmm. yes, All right, and then we're about to get to the top. We just want to do a small layer of, uh, of mousse until right about here. The mousse is stuck over here. You want to grab your fingers and slide it down the bed. It'll bring it all down. Perfect. Okay, that's good enough, right? Yes. All right, now we can leave this. And then beforehand, I made some buttercream, so this American buttercream, and it's just a mixed uh, beaded butter with uh, some powdered sugar and vanilla extract. And also, I kind of eyeball it by taste. So you're gonna start with one stick of butter, and then at room temperature, and then beat it until it's light and fluffy. And then you start adding powdered sugar to taste of how sweet you want it to be, and then just a teaspoon of uh, vanilla extract. So this is going to I be like sweeter mm. than the mousse. And for this, we're going to start piping again <laughs> some grass. So I only have one tip, so I'll do it, and then you can try two if you'd like. Oh, you have a special tip for this. I do. Okay. Yes. So do you buy these bags like this at the I do. These store? are actually order on Amazon. They're really great because they're super durable, and it comes into this big roll, and it's easy. All right. So I got my buttercream. You might need to order some, Brianna, so I can practice. And then here's my tip. So it looks uh, like this. And I think it is Wilton 233, so 233. Well, how do you know about like what tips to use and everything? Um, you kind of just try them out and see what designs they make. And this one is uh, the one they usually use for grass or fur. 
Uh, have you seen those cakes where they look really furry? Yeah. This is the tip that they use. <laughs> so do you make cakes for people too? I mean, like if they order them from you? Or? Cakes is what I usually make. Oh, not the top, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about pies? Pies I make sometimes, um, especially around the holidays. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna grab some of this buttercream here. What is like most of the cake's flavors that you make? Okay, there's this <laughs> one cake um, that people really love it also is oreo um mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like cookies and cream so you mix the or chopped oreos um, into your buttercream it's really really good or just regular chocolate people love chocolate okay so i got my grass ready to go I'm gonna push that down twist it and i'm gonna do a few oh, that's cute that looks like grass yeah here perfect Okay, and then we're gonna start piping, pushing down, and then you're gonna lift. So this is the field. This is gonna be our football field. Ah. That's like cute. the turf. And then beforehand, we've got some flags for the teams that are actually in the Super Bowl this year and their team colors. What would this be? <laughs> Kansas oh, City. That red. Chiefs, yes. And, and the Philadelphia Eagles. We don't need Eagles. to say this. This is so we don't like these people. <laughs> All right, so we got our grass and you're gonna stick a flag in there. What do you want? Kansas City Chiefs people live in Dallas. So we're gonna go with them. Boom. Okay. And that is a field flute. <laughs> you think that'll stay for two weeks in my refrigerator? <laughs> Honestly, so you gotta put the, you gotta put this in the fridge so the mousse hardens. So it's, a, it's a, the fruit that won't stay. Yeah, the fruit that won't stay. But you gotta put it, we'll put these in the fridge for about like 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and then they'll be ready to serve. That you is wanna cute. You want to give it a try? Oh no, I'm, I was kind of trying to talk my way out of having to do the my part. If you want to, I can do yours. No, I'll do it. Okay. It's all about learning. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, wait. So, so you want to twist it and hold it like this. So you're pressing from your palm mm -hmm. up top to get it out. Perfect. And you're gonna press at the bottom and then let go as you lift. And straight up. Press at the bottom and mm -hmm. uh, like release the hand and lift slowly. S slow, 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 slow. Boom. There you uh, go. Let me fix this one. Okay. <clears throat> That's more like a bush. <laughs> well. <laughs> They're gonna be Christmas trees. The guy Christmas did, was just here. They didn't, uh, they forgot to, oh God. <laughs> they forgot to get the grass, well it's not even grass, it's turf, right? <laughs> turf. Cut that mode. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, oh my God, this is so bad. Woo! Oh, that one's good. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. Put a flag in it. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go. No. We can make the rest uh, with whatever you have. Remember, you can use whatever ingredients you'd like, uh, whatever flavors, but here's our uh, field flutes. Oh, crap, I still can't do it. That's better. Thanks. How cute. You like it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back. We are going to finish our Super Bowl truffles. Yeah. We're ready to go, and we're gonna start on this first, and then we'll start decorating. Side. So these are really hard now yeah, good. and okay. that's perfect. perfect. So we got to okay. work pretty fast here to make the chocolate a little bit thinner So it's a bit more uh, melted you add a little bit of vegetable oil to the chocolate and you mix it up All right, so really quick. We're gonna start with the chocolate um, take my Take my uh, truffle I put it on my dipping tool and then I like to tilt my cup, but I just coat it in a chocolate and you want to work really quickly because they do melt. The chocolate's pretty warm. And I just dab off any excess chocolate. And I put it back where it was. How do you get off the little dealy? I just use my nail. Okay. And then I go back with the other tip. Oh, and I just I cover the top really quickly while it's still wet. And we're going to be decorating yeah. these so you're not really going to see it at the top anyway so that's chocolate one done now move on to the next mm. 
how much do I let it come just, off? Just, there you go, just put it back down. And Perfect, then you want to dab the mm -hmm. top. Perfect. So three different bags, or two different bags. Those little things look like dental instruments. You can either clean your teeth or decorate cookies or balls this looks or whatever. Like a trident. Yeah. No, the other one looks oh, like Oh, the other one does look a like scraper. a scraper. Yes. Clean your teeth and decorate balls, Ooh. truffle balls. So we're going to start with white chocolate. That's plenty. All right. How do you want to decorate these? I don't know. You're going to tell me. Okay. Let's do some white drizzles across this way and then blue per um, perpendicular on the chocolates. Okay. And then we can do the sprinkles on the colored ones. Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. All right. So I'll do the white first. Exactly what I was thinking. Perfect. We're on the same wavelength. This is pretty runny. We're gonna go pretty fast. Maybe if we deliver Dax some truffles, he'll <laughs> win for us next year. Dax, will you win for us next year if we make you some truffles? <laughs> All right, and now we're gonna go the other way. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. With the blue. Very pretty. You should make these for the Cowboys Club or whatever the. Wherever the, sweet, the sweets are, I don't know what it's called up there, but. <laughs> Boom. Mmm, pretty. So okay. the chocolate ones are done. We'll let mm -hmm. them sit. We can move on to the next one. So we can do a blue drizzle across this one. Mm -hmm. And then do you want to do um, like silver stars on the way? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah? Great. Okay. We're going to have a star in there too. I love it. <laughs> we love a silver star. And then stars in this one. Okay, let's taste. I know. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. I'm gonna try the field flutes. One is not like the others. <laughs> Which one would that be? Good, though. This is mine. Are right, you going for that one? I will go for this. Okay, I'll go for this one. <laughs> All oh right. Oh my god. Uh, mm -mm -mm. We'll leave the Kansas City one intact. Dig in there. Mmm. Oh yeah. Good. Oh, that mm -hmm. raspberry. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. Thank you for watching Simply Simmons Super Bowl edition. Thank you, Jania, for being here with me. Thank and you so much for having me. All of your recipes, your desserts. So where can people go and find your desserts online? Yeah, you can just message me on Instagram and we'll go from there. Go Cowboys!